in interesting times. This week's stories. In the Pacific, church members help alleviate daily hardships in Hawaii and American Samoa. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, faces the challenge of 2019 novel coronavirus outbreak here in the U.S. For EBC Sports, in California, fans remember Kobe Bryant outside the Staples Center. Kobe fans grieve outside the Mamba Sports Academy. In Florida, players and coaches remember Kobe at Somber Clippers Magic Game. Plus, in Canada, Toronto Comic Book Show keeps the love for literature alive. And in Australia, let's find out why Elizabeth K is a must-see in Perth. This is Eagle News Weekend Edition, broadcasting from Los Angeles, bringing you stories from around the globe. I'm Alan Basoyahe. According to recent surveys, the state of Hawaii has the highest cost of living in the U.S. In response to this, members of the Church of Christ there are doing what they can to help fellow residents in making ends meet. Here now is a combined report by our Hawaii correspondents Charmaine Serrera in the Big Island and Ron Hamilton in Honolulu. And we thank the Church Administration because we are a part of this global activity that is the salvation of other people, our countrymen, our brethren. Members of the Iglesia de Cristo or Church of Christ throughout the Pacific continue their works of charity in 2020 through the outreach program, My Countrymen, My Brethren. Brother Arthur Agag, the supervising minister in Hawaii, describes the state's economic conditions back then and the conditions now. In the year 1982, we were assigned already in this part of the world. And uh, the situation of the economy is uh, not like uh, now. Yes, uh, uh, they have a lower wages compared to the wages now being earned by people. But uh, the raise of uh, the uh, food prices and other commodities uh, went uh, to the roof. And because of that, it is uh, really harder now to make a living here in Hawaii. In an effort to alleviate such challenges, INC members in Kauai, Maui, and Big Island, and even as far away as American Samoa, donated bags of relief goods to their visitors, doing what they can to help fellow residents with their daily life while introducing them to the global church. For more on the church outreach event in Oahu, here's Ron Hamilton. Despite the forecast calling for heavy rains, flooding, and strong winds, Church members and officials, along with their guests, did not appear to be hindered by the weather as seen here at a spiritual gathering and charity event in Honolulu. But we are very, very happy because uh, if we compare people who are listening before, we have more people who respond to our invitation. Like now, we have our, my countrymen, my brethren, we have our evangelical mission. Even though there's an inclement weather, many responded to our invitation. The church's outreach effort throughout the Pacific was held in concert with other congregations around the world. Brother Arthur and other members expressed optimism for more opportunities to assist their fellow citizens later this year. Even the, the economic condition became worse in this part of the world, but the people responded spiritually seeking for their salvation because that is really our hope to receive salvation life forevermore reporting from makalapa elementary school this is ron hamilton legal news item 1 25. 
Thank you, Charmaine and Ron. The CDC now faces the challenge of the 2019 novel coronavirus outbreak here in the United States. Rose Papa Angelis reports. The latest and primary concerns in the international and domestic medical world today is the rapid outbreak of the 2019 novel coronavirus. From its origin in Wuhan, China, the virus scientifically named 2019 NCOV has spread to about 18 locations around the world, including Europe and the United States. Most of those who have been infected were associated with travel from Wuhan, China. Early on, majority of the cases were suspected to be animal-to-person spread. Eventually, there were reported cases of person-to-person -person spread. The source of the virus is still being researched thoroughly and systematically by public health organizations. CDC response On January 27, 2020, CDC issued travel guidance for China, recommending that travelers avoid all non-essential travel to all of the country. Level 3 Travel Health Notice Teams have been deployed to U.S. locations to assist health departments with clinical management, contact tracing, and communications. There is currently a real-time reverse transcription polymerase, Cheyenne Reaction, which is RRT-PCR test, being implemented at CDC but is expected to be shared with other domestic and international partners. Thanks, Rose. Coming up, for EBC Sports, in California, Fans remember Kobe Bryant outside the Staples Center. Kobe fans grieve outside the Mamba Sports Academy. In Florida, players and coaches remember Kobe at a somber Clippers Magic game. Eagle News Weekend Edition will return shortly. Stay with us. Welcome back. This is Eagle News Weekend Edition, coming to you from Los Angeles. I am Alan Basoyahe. Days after basketball legend Kobe Bryant's tragic death in a helicopter crash, fans are still in shock and devastated. Hundreds of them gathered in places that somehow have a connection to the 41-year-old sports icon. Eagle News correspondent Ken Cruz takes us to the Staples Center, Bryant's home court, during his NBA career. Take a look. Hey, good news. Ken Cruz here. I'm actually here in downtown Los Angeles at LA Live, across from the Staples Center, uh, where thousands and thousands of Lakers fans and Kobe fans have gathered to pay their respects to the late Kobe Bryant and his daughter, Gianna. Um, I've been here in the Staples Center covering for Eagle News so many times for Laker games including Kobe's uh, jersey retirement and you know during all those times everyone here is extremely happy joyous and um, this is quite the opposite of that and it's just tough I mean, I'm 31 years old and uh, when Kobe came into the league in 1996 I was eight and so I grew up to Kobe as a boy teenager and even as a man for his 20 years in the NBA and so he's my hero and uh, this has been a huge loss not just for me but obviously for the city of LA and, and uh, it seems like the world in general this has been tough news and uh, respects to the family. For Eagle News, Ken Cruz, always one with one. Thanks Ken. Meanwhile, Fans of the basketball legend Kobe Bryant gathered outside the Mamba Sports Academy in California to mourn his death. JC Gabrantina reports. For thousands of California, people continue to gather to remember the life and legacy of basketball legend Kobe Bryant. I just woke up, like, I checked my phone and all I see is the news and it just hit me really hard. Like, he was a big role model in my life. He taught me a lot of things, perseverance, just to keep going, and it was just a really big shock. I was just in complete shock. I kind of thought like it was like an internet hoax or something that just came out. Kobe was a person I thought would like never die. Um, he was just a person I thought would live forever. Um, I was actually at a friend's house, um, 
and she told me the news, and I was, I didn't believe it, I just, you know, I was like, oh, it's not true. Um, and then next thing you know, I turn on the news and I see that a helicopter crashed, but they haven't released who, had, who was on the plane, or who was on the helicopter. And then like 30 minutes later, they confirmed that he was on it. And I just started crying because Kobe was just an idol for me. I grew up playing basketball. My brother, I, grew, I coached my brother in basketball. He's looked up to Kobe. And it's just, he's just a household name that we just grew up to watch. No, I was coming out of the gym. Yeah. And I do Zumba. So I was on a high when I left the gym. And I got an alert, Facebook alert. So that's how I found out it was on Facebook. Um, initially, it was just um, a helicopter crash. They didn't really confirm yet that there was right. a possibility that he was on the helicopter. And so I immediately Googled, because I know there's a lot of hoax, especially with celebrities. Yeah. And so I immediately Googled it. It still didn't say anything yet. And then I uh, called my brother, he didn't answer, and then my daughter called me. And she was home, and it was breaking in the news. And she told me, and at that time I was already sobbing. I mean, I had this feeling that it was true. Yeah. And so it was just a overwhelming, numbing, can't believe it, no way, not Kobe. And um, I've been following him for, we're the same age, a month apart, um, since high school. And I've been to his games. I follow him on social media. Yeah. I've seen his kids grow up. It's just uh, unbelievable. Talk about it by The pain of the nine lives lost is still fresh in the heart of mourners. But as is the human condition, people find comfort in community. That point proven here at the Mamba Sports Academy, where the arrival of those wishing to pay their respects will no doubt continue in the days ahead. I'm JC Gabrantina, Eagle News, and I am one with 25. Thanks, JC. In Florida, players and coaches of the Clippers and Magic express grief over Kobe Bryant's death. Eagle News correspondent Melissa Potes has the details. Hours after the loss of NBA legend Kobe Bryant, the LA Clippers and the Orlando Magic took the court at Amway Center. The atmosphere was different, somber for a basketball game. They honored the Black Mamba with a moment of silence, and like previous games that day, a 24-second shot clock violation and an 8-second backcourt violation were made by each team to chance of While the Clippers would win 112-97, to the sentiment was the same. This game was different. I told the guys, like, I don't know, you know, before the game, I don't know how you can get this. Like, I don't, you know, it's such a shock. You know, some of you may not feel anything right now. You may come out during the game. You know, we're not prepared. Nobody is uh, for, for tragedies like this. We just aren't. And, you know, it was a tough night. It was tough. You know, it was quiet uh, you know, before the game. You know, it's hard to focus because, you know, of course, you know, it's bigger than basketball, uh, you know, what happened. Um, you know, it's hard to you know, even talk about, you know, it's hard to focus. So we try to, you know, we went out there, tried our best, try to, you know, keep our minds off it, but um, it's definitely hard. It, it, it was tough. Uh, it just, you know, didn't, felt a little bit, uh, you know, it's hard to explain. It just didn't feel right, you know, playing out there. It was just, uh, you know, it was, it was sad. It was just, I don't know. It's hard, it's hard to explain how it, it, it just wasn't, Definitely wasn't a normal feeling being out there. Definitely different, and um, you know, it's uh, yeah. I mean, just a different feeling for sure. You know, and, and uh, you know, you can sense it in the locker room. Doc said his guys were the same way. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's it's a it's a tough day. It's a tough day for our league and um, just for. You know, sports fans and obviously his family and people that knew him and, uh, you know, there's not many, you know, guys like him. So, uh, yeah, it's a, that, that's, it's a difficult day for sure. After the game, players and fans reminisced about what Kobe meant to them and to the sports world. He came out as uh, one of the guys that straight out of high school and no college. And uh, the first year he played, he, he was second-guessing himself and maybe I should have stayed with it, should have stayed in college. He 
didn't get a lot of playing time. Coaching staff wasn't exactly agreeing with what he wanted to do, and he became one of the best players to ever be on uh, planet Earth. You know, the impact that he's brought to this sport, uh, it's unfathomable. You can't really fathom it. It's uh, unfathomable, but yeah, it's, it's huge. Uh, it's over the years, you know, becoming acquainted, acquainted. and uh, this past summer, it really felt like, uh, you know, I was, uh, you started to develop a mentorship with me, and, um, you know, it was, it was a beautiful thing, you know, just to get to, uh, you know, experience some of the things that he was teaching us about the game of basketball. My uh, rookie year in Philly, the, the game we uh, played against them, he had to surpass Shaq, you know, he needed like 20 three, four points, something like that. And uh, he did it in the first half, uh, setting like, you know, like he hit like three threes in a row, like crazy shots, just like Kobe at his best. And I was really wild in that moment. Uh, so, uh, so that was actually a great memory I have of him live. That was the first time playing against him. And that was just... Well, he means a lot to all of us, you know, whether you know, you knew him personally, uh, had conversations with him, or, you know, just watched him growing up. You know, he means a lot to, you know, a lot of people. And, you know, he gave us the, 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 that, that drive when you, you know, felt like you wanted to quit. You know, he had that, you know, mama mentality there. You know, and he instilled that in all of us, you know, just through his hard work. So um, it was hard, you know. It's, it's definitely, you know, a, a real tough loss for, you know, everyone. In the words of Kobe Bryant, the most important thing, the thing that unites all of us, is that we can inspire and challenge one another to be better and do something great for each other. In Orlando, Florida, Melissa Potas, Eagle News, always won at 25. Thanks, Melissa. Up next, in Canada, Toronto Comic Book Show keeps the love for literature alive. And in Australia, Let's find out why Elizabeth K is a must-see in Perth. Eagle News Weekend Edition will be right back. Stay with us. This is Eagle News Weekend Edition, coming to you from Los Angeles. I'm Alan Basoyahe. In Canada, the Toronto Comic Book Show keeps the love for literature alive. How? Eagle News correspondent Patricia Cadet has the details. Avengers, Star Wars, X-Men, Batman, you name it. All the big blockbuster superhero films all have one thing in common. Their stories began on the pages of a comic book. Today, Fans and readers all over Toronto are here to support and celebrate comic books. Before the big screen, fans read these stories by holding a comic book in their hands, eagerly waiting for the next edition. Just childhood memories, childhood dream, just, you know, looking around and seeing what I can remember from when I was a kid. It's a big business now in the movies. The Toronto Comic Book Show keeps the culture alive by featuring the best in modern, Silver Age, Golden Age comics, trade paperbacks, and graphic novels. The show also features popular and beloved toys, TV show, and movie memorabilia. Well, comic books are important because they're a mi number one. They're a mix between, and this is going back to the past when comic books weren't as respected. If you had a good book, it was an amazing book bestseller. If you had great art, that you were a master. You were, this is a masterpiece. You're a great artist. But these comic artists that were so good and wrote great stories, you put the writing with the art and it was maligned. But now what's happened is the uh, it's become more mainstream. And so now putting writing with the art and a lot of these guys are like rock stars now. And as evidence, it's influenced Hollywood and movies. It's become so mainstream. Comic books are actually an incredible part, more than I ever would have thought of the culture. It, it's like every... You know, you know, people have rings of superhero ringtones. They have, you know, it's not just the kid we're having a lunch pail anymore. You know what I mean? It's uh, these movies are making hundreds of millions of dollars and it's secondary characters. It doesn't have to be Spider-Man, Superman or Batman. It can be like evidence Guardians of the Galaxy, which I thought wouldn't work. It ended up being a blockbuster, right? And then the follow up. So now it's like a real big part of pop culture. 
so now it's it's all mainstream. It's a uh, every actually every go into a Walmart, go into a walk down the street, you'll see comic book stuff, uh, comic uh, related influences everywhere now, where you never used to see that as much. Comic books, like other forms of literature, continue to impact its avid readers. From Toronto, Canada, this is Patricia Kadai for Eagle News. Thanks, Patricia. Now, let's head over to the land down under and visit Elizabeth Kay and discover why it is one of the must-sees in Perth, Australia. Eagle News correspondent Sharmi Caro with the details. Elizabeth Kay is the place to be, see and do in Perth. This lemon working for an entertainment and leisure person offers something for everyone. Elizabeth Key is transforming the foreshore into a free playground for all ages to enjoy the city's active lifestyle, abundant sunshine, amazing views, alfresco dining, outdoor markets and lively festival scene. Elizabeth Key is an exciting new waterfront precinct on the banks of the Swan River. The place to see and be seen in Perth. Here you'll find the island playground, the BHP Billiton Water Park, public artwork, promenades, open spaces and a range of bars and restaurants. Other activities to be enjoyed in the area include Segways, Little Fairy Co, Gondola on the Swan, or just take a leisurely stroll alongside the river or stop for a selfie on the bridge. There's also 24 short-term public boat moorings available. Entertainment takes place on a regular basis at points around Elizabeth Quay. It's also easily accessible by public transport, a short walk from the Elizabeth Quay train and bus port. A range of scenic river cruises sail tourists and locals from Barrack Street Jetty to the Swan Valley, Fremantle and Rottnest Island. Elizabeth Key is a vibrant destination with activities for people of all ages at all times with plenty to see and do operating all year round. If you happen to visit Perth, make sure to visit Elizabeth Key. Must see in your travels list. Reporting from Perth, Western Australia, this is Charmy Caro and I'm one with 25. Thanks, Charmy. That is this week's Eagle News Weekend Edition. Join us next week for stories from our bureaus across the nation and around the globe. Visit our websites at eaglenews.net and eaglenewslive.com. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash eaglenews and on facebook.com slash eaglenews. Thank you for watching. I'm Alan Basoyahe. I'm one with 25.